In the last lecture, we have learned that uh, when a current carrying conductor is placed inside a magnetic field, that current carrying conductor will experience a force, and uh, that force is uh, given to be equal to I L cross B, where uh, I L is the current element and uh, B is the uh, magnetic field. Now in this uh, lecture, we shall learn uh, what will happen to a current loop when uh, it is placed uh, in a magnetic field. And uh, from the topic, uh, the current loop will experience a torque. When it is placed inside a magnetic field, the current loop will experience a torque. So here we consider a current loop PQRS carrying current I placed in a magnetic field B such that uh, the plane of this loop makes an angle theta with the direction of the field B. And uh, the forearm uh, of the coil PQ, QR, RS and SP will experience a force since uh, uh, a conductor placed in a magnetic field experience a force. Here we can take this Coil to be made up of four conductors PQ, QR, RS, and SP. So these arms they will experience a force, and uh, the force experienced on the or by this uh, arm PQ is given as uh, F1 and is equal to I PQ vector cross uh, B vector, and the magnitude is equal to I L B sine 90 degree. And here this PQ is equal to L. So the length uh, of this PQ is equal to L. So here we have I L B sine 90 degree. And this 90 is the angle between the, the arm PQ and the direction of the field uh, B vector. And as uh, it is seen from the diagram, the angle between PQ and uh, the B vector is uh, 90 degree. So here the magnitude of the force experienced by the arm PQ is given as F1 is equal to ILB. And uh, the direction of the force F1 can be found out by using the right hand vector product rule. So here we have F1 vector to be equal to I PQ vector cross B vector. So here I P Q vector, this is uh, the vector in the direction of flow of current. So from the diagram, the flow of current is from P to Q. So all the fingers will point towards this uh, uh, P Q. Then the, as we close towards B, we extend the thumb. So we close towards B and the thumb extended will give us the direction of the force F1. So in this case, the force F1 is uh, normal to the plane of the paper and is directed outwards. Now, the arm PQ, uh, QR, uh, will experience a force uh, F2, which is given as uh, F2 vector is equal to I QR vector cross B vector. And uh, the magnitude of this force F2 is equal to IBB sine uh, theta. And uh, in this case, uh, QR is the breadth and it is equal to B. And theta is the angle uh, in which the direction of flow of current makes with the direction of the field. And uh, in the diagram, it can e be easily seen that uh, it can be seen that uh, the angle between the direction of flow of current and the direction of the field B is uh, theta. So again here if you want to find the direction of the force F2 we have to make use of the right hand vector uh, product rule. So again here the fingers will be in the direction of the flow of current which is from Q to R and uh, we'll have to close towards B. So as we close towards B, we extend the thumb and the thumb will give us the direction of the force F2. And in this case, the force F2 is uh, uh, along the plane of the coil or the plane of the paper and is directed downwards. 
then we come to the arm rs now the force experienced by the arm rs is uh, given as uh, f3 vector this is equal to i rs vector cross uh, b vector and again this is the magnitude of this force is equal to i l b sine of 90 so here also rs is the length of this uh, rectangular coil and it is uh, denoted by l and uh, this uh, angle between the rs the direction of flow of current and the direction of the field is 90 d uh, 90 degree as uh, it is seen from the diagram so the magnitude of the force f3 is equal to i l b again the direction can be found out by using the right hand vector product rule so the direct you, the fingers will be in the direction of uh, flow of current then we close all the fingers uh, towards B and as we close towards B the direction of uh, F3 is represented by the thumb so here the force F3 is uh, directed uh, normal to the plane to, uh, of the paper and inwards so F3 is normal to the plane of the paper and is directed inwards then we come to the force uh, experienced by the site uh, sp and the force experienced by this site sp is given as f4 is equal to i sp cross uh, b and here we have uh, the magnitude of this force to be equal to i b b sine of 180 degree minus theta where this sp is equal to b which is the breadth of this rectangular coil and here the angle of uh, uh, between the direction of flow of current that is uh, from s to p and the direction of uh, the magnetic field is 180 minus uh, theta so as it is uh, seen from the diagram we can see that uh, the direction of flow of current is from s to p so that makes an angle uh, of 180 degree minus theta with the direction of the field B. Remember this theta is the angle between the, the plane of the coil and the direction of the field. So here we have uh, 180 degree minus theta to be the direct the angle between the, the direction of flow of current from S to P and the direction of the field. Hence we have this magnitude of the force F4 to be equal to IBB sine of theta. And again here also the direction we can use the right hand vector product rule the fingers will be in the direction of flow of current and we close it towards the direction of the field and the thumb extended will give us the direction of the force and in this case uh, your f4 is directed along uh, upwards and it's along the plane of the uh, coil so now we can see from the diagram that uh, the direction of the force uh, F2 and F4, F2 is in the, the direction downwards and F4 is upward. So they are opposite to one another and uh, they also act along the same line of action that is along the axis of the coil. And we have also found out their magnitudes. The magnitudes of F2 and F4 is equal to IBB sine theta. So here we have two force which are equal in magnitude and opposite in direction and acting along the uh, same line of action. So these two force they will cancel one another. And uh, also we have uh, another force F1 and F3. Again F1 the direction is uh, outwards and F3 the direction is inwards and uh, here the magnitude of F1 and F3 is also same which is equal to ILB but uh, unlike F2 and F4 which acts along same line of action F1 and F3 they do not act along the same line of action so such uh, force which uh, such forces which are equal in magnitude and opposite in direction and acts along different line of action 
Okay, such uh, forces, they will constitute a torque. So here, if we place a current loop inside a magnetic field, that current loop will experience a torque. And uh, the torque is actually given in magnitude to be equal to the product of the magnitude of uh, either force and the arm of the couple. That is the perpendicular distance between the two force. So here the torque experienced by this uh, current loop is given as the uh, either force F1 or F3. So here I'll write F, I have written F1 then into Sn. So here the um, perpendicular distance between the two uh, force F1 and F3 is Sn. And uh, from the diagram, uh, we have this triangle PSN. And uh, the angle theta here is equal to the angle PSN. So here we have uh, this uh, SN to be the base and uh, PN to be the perpendicular and SP to be the hypotenuse so using trigonometry we have uh, this uh, cos of theta to be base by hypotenuse so cos of theta will give you sn divided by uh, this sp so here sn will be equal to sp cos theta and this sp is the breadth of this rectangular coil hence sn is equal to uh, b cos theta and uh, the magnitude of this force f1 is equal to ilb hence we have the torque tau to be equal to ilb then uh, into b cos theta and uh, length into breadth will give you the area so we have tau to be equal to i capital a b cos theta and if the coil has n number of turns, the torque experienced by the coil will be given as n i a b cos theta. So this formula is important. We will use this concept in a moving coil galvanometer. And remember this theta is the angle between the plane of the coil and the direction of uh, the magnetic field. And uh, we can also express uh, the star in the different uh, form that is in terms of the angle alpha now this angle alpha is the angle in which the normal to the coil makes with the direction of the field so here in the diagram we can see that uh, uh, the direction b of b vector makes an angle alpha with the normal to the uh, plane of the coil so we can uh, express uh, tau in terms of alpha. So here from the diagram, it is clearly seen that alpha plus theta is equal to 90 degree. So your uh, theta will be equal to 90 degree minus alpha. Hence putting the value of theta to be equal to 90 degree minus alpha, we have NIAB tau to be equal to NIAB cos 90 degree minus alpha and uh, cos of 90 degree minus alpha will give us sine alpha hence tau is equal to niab sine alpha and this nia this is known as the magnetic moment of the current loop and is denoted by a capital uh, letter m so tau in magnitude is equal to m b sine alpha and in vector form this m b sine alpha is uh, the cross product between the m vector and the b vector so in vector form we can write tau vector to be equal to m vector cross uh, b vector so this will give us the uh, direction from here we can get the direction 
of the talk. Now we come to the next topic, which is a moving coil galvanometer. Now, a galvanometer is a device uh, used to detect a small flow of current in an electric circuit. Now, this device we have used in Chapter 3 while studying a Wheatstone Bridge, a Meter Bridge, and Potentiometer. And in all these applications, we use it, uh, we use this device to detect the flow of current. And uh, the principle in which this device is based upon is that uh, when a current carrying conductor or current carrying coil is placed in a magnetic field, it will experience a torque. So this we have learned in the, the last topic. We know that if uh, a coil is carrying a current, okay, then the, if you place that coil inside a magnetic field, it will experience a torque and that torque is equal to NIAB cos theta which we have uh, derived earlier. Now we shall come to the construction part of the galvanometer. A uh, galvanometer okay, consists of a coil PQRS suspended between two curved pole pieces of a strong magnet uh, north and south pole with the help of a phosphorus bronze wire. And the coil has a central soft iron core. The other end of the coil is attached to a hairspring and the current is uh, let into and out of the coil through the suspension at uh, X and Y terminal. Now a small concave mirror M is attached to the suspension wire or uh, you can uh, attach a pointer at this uh, point. So this is the construction of the galvanometer. It consists of a coil placed inside a rectangular coil PQRS placed inside a magnetic field which is pro provided by the north and south pole of the two curved uh, magnets and uh, current is uh, uh, fed to the coil through the terminal X and uh, Y. Now how does this uh, galvanometer works? Now the working of the galvanometer as I've told you before it is based on the principle of uh, that when the a rectangular or a coil carrying current is placed in a magnetic field then that the coil will experience a torque or in other words the coil will be twisted. So here also when a current is passed through the coil of the galvanometer the coil will experience a deflecting torque. Now this deflecting torque will twist the phosphorus bronze wire and uh, then a restoring torque will be set up in the wire because the uh, wires they are fixed at both ends so a restoring torque will be set up to in the, that wire and if theta is the angle to which the wire is twisted then the restoring torque is uh, given as uh, tau r which is equal to k theta where k is the torsional constant of uh, the wire in this case uh, the torsional constant of the phosphorus bronze wire now the coil as you pass current to the coil okay, the, uh, the coil will rotate until the restoring torque is equal or uh, it balance the deflecting torque so at in that uh, uh, condition the restoring torque will be equal to the deflecting torque so when this happen the pointer of or the twisting of the wire stops now since the field is radial Okay, the plane of the coil always is always parallel to the field that is the angle theta is always equal to zero remember this theta we have done the, while studying the torque experienced by a current loop theta is the angle in which the plane of the coil makes with the direction of the field now since the field is radial in this case we can see from the diagram that uh, the plane of the coil is always parallel to the direction of the field hence theta is always zero 
Therefore, the deflection torque is given as NIAB cos of 0 degree. And cos of 0 is 1, so the deflecting torque is equal to NIAB. So hence, this uh, restoring torque, tau r, will be equal to NIAB. And uh, this, is, this restoring torque is equal to k theta. So we put it uh, in the equation, we'll get k theta is equal to NIAB. And then uh, we'll find the, uh, this uh, magnitude, magnitude of current. And the magnitude of current by cross multiplication will have uh, I to be equal to K divided by N A B into theta. And uh, this K divided by N A B is a constant which is denoted by G. And uh, this G is known as the constant of a galvanometer. Hence uh, I will be directly proportional to the angle theta or to the deflection angle theta. Hence, uh, the galvanometer has a linear scale, so we can uh, assign the uh, reading to each scale of the uh, galvanometer. Now we come to the definition of current sensitivity of the galvanometer. Now, this current sensitivity is defined as the deflection produced in the galvanometer on passing a unit current through its coil and uh, it is expressed as SI is equal to theta divided by I so it's the deflection per unit current and this theta by I we have found out this uh, expression of I as uh, K divided by NAB theta hence theta by I will be equal to NAB divided by K so here we can see that the current sensitivity depends upon the number of turns uh, of the coil, the area of the coil, the magnetic field, and the torsional constant. So here your N should be large, A should be large, and B also should be large for the current sensitivity to be large. And K it should be small. So in order to choose a small uh, torsional constant, we'll have to use a bronze wire. So a bronze wire has a very low torsional constant and we have to have a, a large number of turns, a large area of the coil and a, a large magnetic field. And if the current sensitivity is large, it means that uh, it can detect the smallest flow of current. So even if a current is very small, if the sens uh, current sensitivity is large, the galvanometer can detect such small current. Now a galvanometer cannot be used to measure the electric current in the circuit. Okay, since we have another device called the ammeter, okay, which is used for measuring electric current in a circuit. So galvanometer is used to detect a small flow of current, but uh, it cannot be used to measure large current in the circuit. Now uh, this is because due to its uh, low resistance, a large current will produce a very large deflection in the galvanometer. Now uh, this large deflection may damage the pointer of the galvanometer. And also a large current will also produce a large amount of heat and that heat may also damage the galvanometer hence a galvanometer cannot be used to measure large current however a galvanometer can be converted into an ammeter by connecting a low resistance s called the shun in parallel with the coil of the galvanometer okay so this resistance uh, is much uh, this resistance s is much lower than the resistance provided by the coil of the galvanometer so that uh, most of the current will flow through this low resistance uh, rather than the galvanometer now if uh, we want uh, to convert a galvanometer into an ammeter of uh, range 0 to i ampere 
I ampere here being the maximum current that uh, an ammeter can be measured. So in order to do that, again, we'll have to find out the value of the shun resistance required. So again, here in this uh, uh, diagram, a shun S, which is to be found out, is uh, connected in parallel to the coil of the galvanometer. And I here is the maximum current that the galvanometer can, or uh, the ammeter, it can uh, measure. So at the junction, you can see that uh, the current I splits into two parts. One is IG, which is the current current flowing through the galvanometer, and uh, the remaining I minus IG, which is most of the current, will flow through the shunt resistance S. And here, since they are connected in parallel, the potential difference between the uh, between the galvanometer and the shunt resistance uh, are the same. Hence, we have uh, the potential difference across the shunt, which is I minus IG into S, is equal to the potential difference across the coil of the galvanometer G, which is IG G. Here, G is the resistance of the coil of the galvanometer. So here the shunt resistance S is equal to IgG divided by I minus IG. So this uh, gives us the value of the shunt resistance required to convert the galvanometer into an ammeter of range 0 to I ampere. Now a galvanometer can also be converted into a voltmeter. A voltmeter is a device uh, which is used to uh, measure the potential difference across the two ends of uh, a conductor carrying current. Now a galvanometer cannot be connected in parallel to a conductor to measure the potential difference across it uh, because uh, due to its low resistance, a large part of the current will flow through the galvanometer. So as a result, the potential difference across the conductor will decrease. Hence, the galvanometer will show a false reading. However, a galvanometer can be converted to a voltmeter by connecting a high resistance R in series with the coil of the galvanometer so that uh, most of the current will flow through the conductor and only a small part of the current will flow through the galvanometer. So now suppose if you want to convert a galvanometer into a voltmeter of range 0 to V volt. Here V is the maximum, V volt is the uh, maximum voltage or potential which can be measured by using this uh, galvanometer. So in the diagram we have, uh, we have uh, unknown resistance R connected in the series with the coil of the galvanometer of resistance uh, G. And here the potential difference of this combination is V volt. And uh, IG is the current flowing through the galvanometer and through the high resistance R. So using Ohm's law, IG is equal to V divided by G plus R and uh, upon simplification we have found out that R is equal to V divided by IG minus G. So this uh, is the required uh, resistance to be uh, connected to a galvanometer in series so that uh, we can use the galvanometer to measure uh, potential difference of uh, V volt.